I've been playing a little bit more around with Home Assistant and what I'm going to do in today's video is show you how to integrate Unify Protect with Home Assistant. Alongside this what I'm also going to do is I'm going to show you how to trigger another action when there is a motion or a trigger at the doorbell. So what will happen is if there's a motion or the doorbell is pressed I'm going to have these lights that are in front of me just flash. So I'm going to very quickly go through how to set up Home Assistant and what you need to configure on there. I already have Unify Protect set up. Um, if you need any help on that side or you want a video on how to get that side set up, then drop me a comment down in the description below. So we start by creating a name. So I'm just gonna call it Home. And then we'll go ahead and create a password. And once we've done that, you can create an account. And then it's gonna ask you for a location, which not really going to pop in and then you go down and you basically set all the values that you want to set. Click next. So this is if you want to share anything. We are, don't really want to share anything at the moment so we'll go ahead and click next. It's already found a load of stuff already. Uh, you can see there you go there's Unify Protect. It's already found it but I'm going to go ahead and finish this anyway. It's my current dashboard. As I mentioned I've only just started playing around with this so it's not looking the best or the most stylish but it, it does the job for the time being. So if I quickly show you one of these, I'm just gonna turn the light off and you see it's gone dark this side now and I'll turn it back on and the light is come back. So it definitely works in that sense. So that's what I'm gonna make happen is I'm gonna integrate the Unify Protect and then I'm gonna make these lights in front of me flash when there's a motion at the door. So to do the Unify Protect integration, you need to go to the configuration item in the bottom corner. Then we go to integration and devices and this is where you can see everything is connected up. So if we go to here and we go to add integration, we type in Unify, you can see there's Unify Protect. And this is where you would fill in the details for the Protect system. So I know mine is 10.1.1.1 on port 443. Now this is on my IoT network and I'm talking back to my existing network or my LAN network, sorry. So I have punched a hole in the firewall to allow port 443. We then create a username and password, which I've already created. But I'm going to quickly show you how to do that anyway. So you go to the Unify Protect system, you go to Users, and I've already created a Home Assistant account. So you can create the Home Assistant account, give it a username and password, and then you give it view only rights to Unify Protect, because that's all it needs. Once you've created your user account, the other thing you need to quickly do is go to the dashboard, go to Unify Protect, go to the device itself, click on the camera, and then if you go down to settings, you just need to create you just need to create the R RTSP feed. So just enable whichever one you want. I've enabled them all at the moment. And then we go back to Home Assistant. So we go back and then we click Submit. And we let that go off and authenticate. So there we go, it's now picked up a few cameras. The only one I'm really interested in at the moment is the front doorbell. So I'm not gonna give it an area for now. I'm just gonna click Finish. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Overview, sorry. And then go to here hit dashboard and then we're going to add a card and then I'm going to choose by entity so so I'm going to search for front door oh, if I can type and you can see just here I have come camera front door high so I can click continue and then we click to add to the Lovelace UI and now if I scroll down here you can see that exists in this bottom corner just here so there we go, I've just moved that into the top right hand corner and you can do that with the arrows, you can move this around. Like I said, I still need to play around with the dashboard to make it a bit more uh, user friendly. That is the Unified Protect integration. So it's really simple, really easy. And uh, as I mentioned in terms of where I went to add the card, you can go to Entity and if I just type in front door again, and you, there's, there's so many triggers you can use um, you can use the doorbell chime, so when something happens, if there's an object detected, a person detected. So you could even, with these lights, these are RGB, for example. If it's a vehicle, you can get it to flash green. If it's a person, you can get it to flash red. It's very highly configurable, so you can do this whatever you want, however you want to configure it. Not only this, there are other things you can do. For example, if you're watching TV, you can get this to actually send a snapshot to the TV. If you want to see a video like that, let me know down in the comments below and I'll happily put something like that together. Now we're going to go ahead and create the automation for the lights to trigger when there's motion at the front door. So to do this, you need to go to configuration, which is in the bottom left. Uh, you then go to automation and scenes, create automation. 
We're going to start with an empty automation. They have a couple of templates in there, which is motion activated, zone notifications, but we'll go with here. We'll just uh, flash uh, studio lights when motion at door. So what we're going to do there is we need a state. So the state of it is uh, if we search for doorbell, there we go. So the state is the front door motion. So you can do this for when the button is pressed as well. So you can choose whatever state you want to do. From and to is optional. And then we're going to add a trigger, basic, sorry, add an action, sorry. Uh, you can add conditions such as to run between certain times. There's there's plenty in there for whatever you can do, whatever you want to do, sorry. So we then want to look at the device. And then we're going to look for, uh, if we scroll down, there we go, the studio play bar left. What we want to happen is we want the studio lights to flash. So let's just quickly save that. And we're going to add another action for the device. So we found the play bar on the right hand side. And then what we want that one to do is flash as well. So we go ahead and save that. So if I quickly go ahead and run this action just to test this, you can see those lights trigger quite brightly. So unfortunately I can't be in two places at once so I'm going to set my camera up just here pointing at the screen so you can see what's happening here and alongside that I'm going to go downstairs outside the front door and trigger a motion basically. So what the aim is is when the camera sees me out there you should see the play bars, play bars flash in here as well. The only thing I've not found yet, which I found slightly annoying, is the picture in terms of the update of the Unify Protect image is not constant. It, every five to 10 seconds it refreshes. I haven't played around with that part too much to see if we can get more of a, more of a real time image. However, if you do that, it takes up more network bandwidth and more everything's working a lot harder to make it happen basically. But the whole thing is if I don't hear someone at the front door, I know the lights are going to flash when there's some sort of motion. Now I can change this to pressing the doorbell and I can change it to a different color for example so I can make it red if it's a doorbell or in green if it's a motion whatever just for example. But I'm really liking how powerful this is and what you can do with it. If you want to see some more in terms of Unify Protect integrations especially as I mentioned earlier with the TV and popping up an image um, I think that would be quite a fun one to set up um, quite handy for a lot of people too. Let me know down in the comments below. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know if you do use Home Assist at home already and if what integrations you have set up and how and what you've got working on your Unify system. This is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.